Hello everyone and welcome back to On Point HQ and the sixth video in the Bolt Action Basics series. In this video we're going to be looking at vehicles in Bolt Action. Now there are many different variants of vehicles that can be used but for the purposes of this video we'll be looking at the role of transports and how shooting works with tanks. Both transports and armoured fighting vehicles have a set of stats but these are obviously very different to those assigned to infantry units. So let's have a look at these stats. Cost. This is how many points the vehicle will cost to take. Weapons. This shows what weapons, if applicable, the vehicle is armed with. Damage value. This value represents how difficult it is to damage or to destroy the vehicle. Transport. This shows how many men the vehicle can carry. Tow. If the vehicle has the tow option, this will outline what type of guns it can tow. Options. This will show any additional weapons that may be added to the vehicle and the associated cost in points. Special rules. This will detail any special rules that may apply to the vehicle. We will now look at a transport and a tank and look at their individual stats. Now this is an M5 half track and is classed as a transport vehicle. It can be taken as inexperienced, regular or veteran and the points will increase based on this rating. It is armed with a heavy machine gun and has a damage value of 7 plus. It can transport up to 12 men and can tow light, medium or heavy anti-tank guns, light or medium howitzers and light or heavy anti-aircraft guns. For its options it can be equipped with up to 3 additional medium machine guns and its special rule is the vehicle is an open topped vehicle. Now let's look at the stats of a tank. You will notice that these do not have the stats for tow or transport. This is a German Panther tank and can only be taken as a regular or veteran. It is armed with a super heavy anti-tank gun, a coaxial medium machine gun and a hull mounted medium machine gun. Its damage value is 9 plus but its special rule is that it has frontal armour rating of plus 1 which increases this damage value to 10 plus. In the next part of the video we will look at how these different types of vehicles operate in games of bolt action. We will first look at the role of transports and how these work in bolt action. If a vehicle is transporting passengers, two order dice need to be assigned. One for the vehicle itself and the second for the passengers. In this example, the American player has assigned an advance order to the half track to allow it to move forward. When the next American dice is drawn, the player assigns the unit inside an advance order to allow that section to disembark. It is important to note that passengers cannot exit a transport vehicle with a run order and in turn if a vehicle has been issued with a run order the passengers cannot exit the vehicle that turn unless it is damaged, destroyed or immobilised. Earlier we noted that the half track has the open topped special rule but what does this mean? Ordinarily transports and armoured fighting vehicles are often enclosed and so cannot be damaged by small arms fire from infantry sections. However, if a vehicle is open topped, it is often possible to pin the vehicle using small arms fire. This represents the crew in the open top vehicle ducking for cover or generally keeping their heads down. However, if a vehicle has a soft skin special rule, then it is possible for it to be destroyed by small arms fire. Let's see this in action. A French infantry section fires at a German Kugelwagen with a soft skinned rule. Now let's assume they require a 4 plus to hit the vehicle. With this roll, they have struck the vehicle three times. Now instead of the unit's rating determining what roll is required to inflict a casualty, a roll of a 6 is required to destroy a soft skinned vehicle. The French player rolls the damage and the single 6 is enough to destroy the Kubelwagen. One important aspect of transport vehicles in bolt action is that their primary role is to transport troops into battle. When this roll has been completed, they are not usually expected to stay and fight. To represent this, at the end of the game turn, if a transport vehicle is closer to an enemy unit than a friendly unit, the transport is removed from the game. This is the crew leaving the battlefield or fleeing from the vehicle. Either way, the transport vehicle is considered as destroyed for the purposes of the game. With the basics of transports covered, let's look at shooting with tanks. In this section of the video, we will be using the Panther tank that we looked at earlier to demonstrate how shooting works against other armoured vehicles. 
We noted that the tank was equipped with a main gun, a coaxial medium machine gun and a hull mounted medium machine gun. With multiple weapons this means that the Panther can split its fire between separate targets. However, the main gun and the coaxial cannot be fired at the same time so you must choose which weapon you want to fire. Let's have a look at this in action. The Panther is faced by two enemy units, a tank and an infantry section. The German player issues a fire order to the tank and opts to fire its main gun at the enemy tank and the hull mounted machine gun at the infantry section. Had the enemy tank not been there, the German player could have opted to fire both the hull mounted medium machine gun and the coaxial at the infantry section. But let's resolve the Panther shooting its main gun at the Churchill tank. The Panther is equipped with a super heavy anti-tank gun. Having consulted the weapons chart, we can see this has a range of 84 inches, fires one shot, and has a penetration value of 7 plus. The enemy tank is in range and with the fire order the German player needs 3 plus to hit the enemy tank. Unlike infantry most armoured vehicles cannot react to being fired at by going down. With the roll of a 4 the shot has struck the Churchill. The shot is fired at the front of the enemy tank. Had it been aimed at its sides, rear or top armour the Churchill would have suffered a reduction in its damage value. We can see that the Churchill has a damage value of plus 10. When we factor in the 7 plus penetration value of the Panther's main gun, this means that a roll of a 4 plus will damage the Churchill as it needs to exceed the 10 plus damage value. With the roll of a 4, the tank has been struck and damaged. To determine the damage incurred, a roll was made on the damage chart in the box action rulebook. With the roll of a 5, the Churchill is destroyed. However, it is still possible to damage the tank had the German player rolled a 3 to match the 10 plus damage value. And we call this superficial damage. To represent this, the roll on the damage chart is taken with a minus 3, which makes it a bit more difficult to deal any serious damage. Had the player rolled under the amount required, a pin would have been assigned to the Churchill as per the normal shooting rules. As with the rest of the Bolt Action Basic series, these are a very basic overview of the key mechanics within Bolt Action. There are several more detailed aspects of transports and armoured fighting vehicles, all of which can be found by picking up a copy of the Bolt Action Rulebook. These cover movement, close assaults and a wide array of additional and special rules. If you have any comments or questions just leave these down below and I will respond to all comments and questions. But as always, thanks for watching, do take care and I will catch you all in the next, vi in the next video. So bye bye for now.